This was a spicy little cinematic I made for the release of the new Nomad Rust skin. You know, I ended up not using it, essentially. I just felt like it wasn't good enough. But it is kind of epic, so I thought I'd play it for you guys while I explain what this video is about. Now, a couple of weeks back, I released a video with three really cool exploit glitch tip type things. You guys absolutely loved it. The response was beautiful. So I decided to make a follow-up with another three things you very likely didn't know in Rust. They could be tips, they could be glitches. Holy shit, that was cool. God damn it, that editing. Anyway, like I was saying, I'm going to show you three incredibly cool things you didn't know about Rust. One of them is a sneaky little tip that lets you glitch your way into a little item, and it lets you jump people unexpectedly. Free loot, baby. The other is a nice little glitch. If you do some special movements with your mouse, you can exploit the system into giving you unlimited low-grade fuel. And finally, my favorite tip of the lot, early game raiding. I have figured out a way how to take out sheet metal doors with zero explosives, guaranteeing you a super easy raid on white day. And speaking of raid, today's video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. Raid Shadow Legends is an incredible hero collecting turn-based RPG, a mobile and PC game where you collect heroes, level and skill the heck out of them, fight your friends, people online, in your quest to create the ultimate champions. Here are my top 5 reasons on why you should play Raid. There are literally hundreds of heroes available, all from different factions. It's kind of like a never-ending list. Number 2, the customization. You have things called artifacts. You can customize any character you want, making them powerful attackers, healers, regen, improve their crit, the list is endless. Number three, the complexity. Once you find those heroes and you tweak and alter their abilities, you can actually start winning games that you previously lost. There's so many different layers to the game itself, and I must admit that I spend a lot of time tweaking rather than fighting. Number four, the boss fights. When you get through a really difficult dungeon and you are left with a final boss, the bosses are epic because you already have a worn down squad, now you've got to jump into a huge boss battle, and it's usually edge of your seat kind of action. Number five, the graphics are so gosh darn good. Probably my favorite part of the game would be the mystery shards, and what you do is you go to the summoning portal, you open it up to unlock heroes. If you don't like the hero, you can go to the tavern, sacrifice a hero you don't like in order to improve a hero that you do like, making your squad even stronger. There are loads of stuff happening in Raid this month, special events happening every day, tons of new champions, and a new feature called the Guardian Ring, giving you tons of ways to use your champions. At the start of December, Raid is releasing one of their biggest updates ever. Honestly, it looks insane. All these new updates and features are coming, making now the perfect time to start playing Raid. But don't worry, you won't get left behind in the description of this video or that giant QR code on screen. Click on it and I'll give you a head start. You'll get 200,000 silver, one times XP boost, an energy refill and an ancient shard so you can summon up an awesome champion and best for last, an epic hero called Chinaru. Damn, she looks fine. All these fantastic, beautiful treasures will be waiting for you right over here. Bearing in mind that these rewards will only be available for the next 30 days and only for new players. Once you've got your rewards, find me in game. My name is Mr. Flack. Let's smash some skulls together. I'll see you champions in game. Thank you, Raid Shadow Legends, for sponsoring this segment. You guys are legends. So the servers just wipe and sprawled across the map are hundreds of tiny little two by one wooden bases. Now we can easily get inside a tiny wooden base. All we need is a bit of fire, a flamethrower perhaps, and we can easily get inside to claim our hide poncho, bow, and three hemp seeds. However, when people start getting to stone bases and sheet metal doors, things start becoming a little bit more complicated. You do need boom to get inside these bad boys. And of course, because the server just wiped, we don't have any booms. So what do you do to get inside a stone base with a sheet metal door? You could obviously use a jackhammer, everybody knows that, even though the jackhammers on wipe day is a little bit rare, one of those can easily just tear up that door, surely. Look at that high value tool go. Good lord, it's almost done. And just like that, your tool is completely ruined. Let's see how much damage we did. Okay, so jackhammers don't work, tools don't work, we don't have exp- Oh! God! I can't stand fucking bears. Bye, have a great time. So tools don't work, we don't have any booms, what do we do? Well, I want you to have a look at this. A level one workbench. This is the tech tree button. And right at the top, the first researchable item is the salvage hammer. The most underappreciated, underused tool in the entire game. Let me explain. Costs 75 scrap to learn, needs one metal pipe and 50 metal frags in order to craft, 
And unlike other tools, like you can see this hatchet, it can gather trees, it can gather flesh, it can't gather ore. All these pickaxes can also gather ore and flesh, but not trees. They are very limited in their ways. Even the salvage ice pick, the granddaddy, still can't gather trees. But the salvaged hammer is a multi-tool. It can gather stone, it can gather trees, it can gather flesh, it can destroy human beings' faces with its high output of damage, it swings incredibly fast. One could call it the multi-pass of the tool wall. Lilu Dallas multi-pass. And because it swings so quickly, even though it gathers slightly less than the dedicated tools like hatchets or pickaxes, the swing speed allows you to gather resources just as quick. And if you have a look at the integrity of the tool, it's very slow wearing. But one of its most unknown features is this. I want you guys to count with me. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. A mere seven strokes and look what happens. One HP done. Now, why are you doing the math in your mind? Don't worry, I've already done it. 1750. That is the number of swings required to break a sheet metal door with a salvaged hammer. Now for some more maths. How much damage will one full brand new salvaged hammer do with a door? There we go, a full 10 damage to a sheet door with one metal pipe and 50 frags. And after that's broken, to repair it, only 10 metal frags and one HQM. So how much damage can you do to a sheet door with one fully repaired salvaged hammer? Let's check it out. Eight repairs, 50 HP off that door. Let's crunch some numbers. Five metal pipes and five batches of 50 metal frags gives you five salvaged hammers. Now with those five salvaged hammers fully repaired eight times, using a total of 80 metal frags and eight HQM for those repairs, gives you a grand total of, drum roll please, 890 metal frags, five pipes and 40 HQM to break one of those sheet metal doors which is insanely cheap. However, the real clincher comes in the form of numbers. If you and four other people, for example, a total of five people had to take those five hammers, it'll take a total of six minutes of chopping and swinging and repairing in order to take down one sheet metal door. Not a bad strategy for wipe day. However, that six minutes is multiplied by five if you're a solo. However, if somebody's logged off for the night, you're running alone and you're on a deserted part of the map, that will make a small base easy pickings. Next, we have unlimited fuel glitch when it comes to cars. You'll see here, the fuel tank is empty. Now what you want to do is you want to find a car with two engines, this is a requirement. You want to go ahead and grab any engine parts that will fill these two engine bays. Both engines have to be 100% full of parts, it doesn't matter the kind of parts. Once your engines are full, you go back to your fuel tank and you drop in one single low grade fuel. Then go back to the engine, pull out one singular car part, a little bit laggy, climb back in the car, start it up, and there you go. You have unlimited fuel. It's quite strange and quite simple, but yes, it's that simple. Find a car with two engines, or build a car with two engines, populate the engine parts, put one low-grade fuel in, take one engine part out of one of the engines, and you are greeted with a literal never-ending fuel tank. I'm not sure why this happens, and I'm pretty certain it's gonna get patched, but man, that's cool. Let's speed it up for you so you don't have to wait. Okay, it drove a considerable distance as you can see. There were no jump cuts in that sped up footage. If I hop out and check the fuel. Come on. It's a little bit glitchy, I apologize. There we go, there's the one fuel, it is still there. Now, if I go to another two engine vehicle, you can see there's one over here. I'm gonna show you that there's no trickery. If I don't do the previously mentioned steps, the fuel runs out. I'm gonna fill this engine bay with the same parts that came from the other car. Okay, gonna go back to that fuel tank, pop in some, ah, damn it. I do apologize, I'm trying to not do any cuts in the footage so that you guys can see that this is no like trickery or anything, this is legit. Put in three fuel over there, hop in, start it up. It is gonna be a little glitchy, I don't know why the cars are so glitchy today, but anyway, I'm driving around. Uh, it should likely run out very soon. Okay, there we go, I ran two low grade fuel in that small U-turn. If I drive for a few seconds more, I can imagine it would die. Ah, there we go. 
Okay, so now I'm out of fuel completely. Now we're gonna try the little trick where I take out one engine part. I'm gonna go grab some more low grade. Pop in the one fuel. There we go. Go to that engine, pull out one singular car part. Lag. Ah, there we go. Oh wow. I'm like, I'm full W King now, dudes. I don't know why it's so laggy. Wow, this is super laggy. Okay, let me, I think it's the monument, to be honest. I'm gonna drive away from the monument quickly. I'm gonna speed it up so you guys don't have to sit through this shit. Bite quickly, have a look. There we go. One fuel. How good is this freaking glitch? Anyway, this was tested on the 24th of November. It is still 100% working on normal live servers. Enjoy it while you can. And the final glitch comes in the form of the rib boat. Now I'm parking the boat on the coast over here and I'm going to hide inside this boat. You can see I'm right by the lighthouse, right by the harbor. This is a pretty desirable spot. A lot of monuments, river. You can see there's the oil rig at the top over there. I mean, this is a very desirable place for people to be. If somebody finds a rib right over here, they're gonna steal it. Now what I want you to do is stand right against the boat and angle yourself away from the boat at probably about 10 o'clock. So you look away from the boat. Now you're holding your alt key. You know the alt look where you can look around and your body doesn't move. You hold alt look, you look back at the boat for the push logo, you crouch yourself down and then you push the boat. But because your body is facing away from the boat, it doesn't understand how you're pushing and the boat starts getting pushed towards your body. Now this is gonna take a little bit of practice, I must admit, but what you wanna do is go on a private server, practice with this technique until you can get the boat pushed fully over you. You can see the boat slides over you and now you are completely hidden away. You can fine tune it by pushing it around a bit, but again, while the practice, adjust a little more. There we go. And now what I can do is hide inside the carcass of this boat, wait for somebody to come and claim the boat for themselves, you know what I mean? And then you can pop them through because your bullets shoot out of this area. Give a little bit of a tester with the DB. There we go. Now what it looks like from the outside, I'm going to quickly enter D by camera mode. There we go move away from my body. Now, like I said, it takes a bit of practice. If you look carefully here, you'll see my head <laughs> clipping through the boat. It is possible to fully hide yourself. You want to be hiding in that little uh, steering wheel column or maybe you put your head by that box area, but just give it some practice and you'll be good in no time. Okay, now I'm going to try from the other angle. I'm going to stand at the two o'clock direction with my back against the boat, crouch and alt look to the right. And then, ah, look at that first push right under the boat. So this is the optimal position. You can see I can fire shots, it's hitting the sand. And if I debug camera out again, you can see that I am now clipping inside that little boxy over there, fully ready to put some bitches on their back. I do hope you enjoyed these super sneaky exploits and tips regarding the hammer and the hiding spots and the fuel and whatnot. I hope you use it because it's very likely gonna get patched. Have some fun, destroy some bitch, destroy a clan, drive instead of walk, give the horses a break. Have some fun and I'll catch you next time. The fuel glitch courtesy of Protox and the rib glitch courtesy of Omen. I'm going to leave their respective videos in the video description below. Both videos had super low views. I just wanted to bring these glitches to light. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your time. And to my darling, beautiful patrons, I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you for your support. If you enjoyed the video, please give a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. And I'll catch you on the next glitch video. Have a good one. Peace.